Whoa. Whoa, so right good there. to have you here. Yeah, this... You know, I know you have you have this new show now. It's doing very well. But you, but people still miss uh, Seinfeld. I think they will for a while. Well, that's nice too. Can, yeah. yeah. Can you give us a little uh, Frank Costanza for old times' sake? You just really to... want to hear this? Yeah, really? I think so. Just to okay. give us a fix. Oh, I I, I, well, certain things do stick. Uh, you know, tell me what you think. I. Do you want a man's ear or do you call it a bro? <laughs> yeah. And there was a. And of course, there's the. Why did you trade Jay Buna? <laughs> That's just no son. You can do these at parties now. Yes, yes. I mean, I, you know, I'm, and I don't even do Serenity now. I just leave that alone. You know, just kind of lay there leave that until I get requests or something of that nature. The, the character, actually, the whole Costanza family was very loud. How did that come about? Well, uh, how did they become loud? I think they were born loud, mm -hmm. essentially. You know, it's a family that came from Queens, and that nobody ever heard them. <laughs> and uh, Frank Costanza was a guy who. Uh, who had to be heard in his life, you know? He had to come out of uh, his shell. Mm -hmm. uh, I got in touch with what I call my inner rage. At least that's what my, <laughs> that's what my wife, Ann Murray, used to say. I uh -huh, was getting in touch uh -huh. with it. And, you know, uh, people today, when you get to a certain point in your life, uh, things are not coming your way. You're on a fixed income, and you have kids who aren't doing exactly what you would wish them to do. They didn't turn out the right way. What else can you do but say, <laughs> you're crazy, you're out of my life, get out of here, I don't want to talk to you anymore, you're dead. Now, basically. And that's it. Something everyone can identify with. Yeah, yes. Now, uh, you have a new show. Uh, you have a new show, King of Queens. It's doing very well. King of Queens, Tell yes. us about the show. Well, King of Queens is about a family in Queens, mm -hmm. uh, husband and wife, uh, Kevin James, Leah Remini. I play the, uh, what you call the worm in the apple, the father-in-law who moves in because I burned down the house. And you have a clip here for us, something we can see? It well, gives this us is a clip that, uh, that uh, I come into the scene. I, have, uh, I say this to Kevin and uh, Leah. I said, this is something, uh, I have something very important to talk to you about. And I show them this, this is what happens Okay, in the scene. let's take a look at this uh, clip from uh, King of Queens. You can do it! <laughs> Stop that! Stop it! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no! Rob, Rob, come on. I played roles like that all my life, Rob. Look what happened to me, you know. You'll go places. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> You Just were talking let me about enjoy my moment. <laughs> you were talking about uh, kids disappointing you. You have to be happy for your son Ben. I mean, this movie, something about Mary, huge hit. And uh, yes. But there's some stuff in the movie that I think. We know Ben. He's come on the show a lot of times. Yeah. What, was, it, was, it, was it difficult for him to sit in the screening of that movie? Because there's some adult themes in there. There's a very famous masturbation scene in that movie. Uh, we, we, nice. You know, I mean, how did he... <laughs> how, did, how did he handle being in the theater, you know, well, with you when you, that was screened? Well, Ben, uh, before Ann, Amy, and myself, uh, they showed it in Woonsocket, Rhode Island, where the Farrelly's live. Right, and the directors, it, yeah. Oh, it was quite an ex experience, you know. The, the people from Woonsocket turned out to see this movie, and it was... People sticking out of their, their windows, doing all that stuff. Anyway, under this circumstance, bear with me. Uh, <laughs> ben warned me before and says, Dad, you're going to be embarrassed by what you see, perhaps. And I, so he said, don't sit in the same row with me. So Anne and myself and Amy, we mm -hmm. sat a couple of rows back. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, when uh, the scene came on where he came on and he, uh, he, he did what we call the masturbation scene. Uh, <laughs> That's what well, it's now become known in, in literature as, no, yeah. Well, this didn't bother me. What really bothered me is when he, when he zipped up his fly and, and he hit his shamala. And that was the thing <laughs> that got me, got me, got me, got, that's the part that bothered me. I is, mean, that a, is that a medical term? I mean, <laughs> no, no. We'll no, have no. to ask uh, well, the good doctor when he comes out here in the next segment. Well, try, I'll try to share this with the world. Uh, what happened, uh, Shamla, when I uh, lived in the Lower East Side, my parents did not really kind of give me any kind of uh, information about sex. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, I learned, I got my first sexual instruction, so to speak, or awareness was in the, in, in the sixth grade. Uh, the teacher was reading Chaucer, and suddenly I felt this bulge in my pants, and I, I was 12 years old, I didn't know what it was. So at the end of the class, I, I went up and said, Miss Rosenblatt, I've got this. And she looked down and she says, my God, you have an erection. I said, yes. And I says, it's very, very annoying. How do I get rid of it? <laughs> and she said, that's not my department. <laughs> she says, go downstairs and speak to the hygiene people. 
And I went down to see Mr. Tuttle. I walked in. He looked down. He said, and you God. still you still had it at this point? Wait a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long night. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm impressed. No, yeah. no, no. I, well, okay. You have to understand. 12 years old, things were good. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, so I go downstairs, and, and, yeah. and, and Tuttle says, he looks down, he says, you got an erection. He says, yeah. He says, get the hell out of here. <laughs> he says, uh, I said, how do I get ready? He says, I can't help you. Go to the library, look it up. <laughs> so it was the end of the day. I went down to the, uh, to, the, to the library. And you have to remember, I was still reading the book. Anyway, <laughs> I went down to the library, <laughs> uh -huh. and I went to the medical shelf. And I took down a book called The Anatomy of Sex by Havelock Ellis. And I turned to the chapter on erections. Mm -hmm. At that moment, the, 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 there was a gong. It was a fire drill. And I didn't know what to do. I took the book, I stuck it under my jacket, and I walked out. Now, in the libraries, you had to go through a turnstile, you know? Yeah. And as I went through the turnstile, I hit my erection and it went away. <laughs> now, at this age and time in my life, every once in a while, keep this in mind, Rob. I got you. I s <laughs> you too, Andy. I heard all about the cat houses and stuff like that. I know where you're uh -huh. So, uh, at this point I, uh, in life, every once in a while I do get an erection. And what I do when <laughs> Ann is not around, uh -huh. I go down the subway, I buy a token, I stick it in this thing, and I go through and I get rid of my erection. <laughs> that's, <it. laughs> that's a great. Well, anyway, <laughs> that's a. Uh, that's a great advice for the young people yeah, out there, yeah, the old right. people, keep everybody. Yeah, you keep the faith, kids. <laughs> well, King of Queens, I don't know how this became a therapy session, but King of Queens, Mondays at 8.30 p.m. on CBS. Uh, Jerry, it's always a pleasure when you're here. Come back real soon, and congratulations on the new show. Thank really. you. Jerry Thank Stiller, everybody. We'll take a break when we come back. Dr. Drew Pinsky and Adam Carolla will straighten this man out.